Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and I'm here today with a very special guest and Matt from Mostly Average Matt is joining me for this park tour. So Matt, how are you doing? Great, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, and for those of you that don't know, the link to his channel will be in the description below, but Matt is a very good Planet Coaster PC player and he does a lot of Challenge Park series, which is even more impressive the fact that it's a challenge park. Uh, so I thank you a lot for joining me for this tour today. Yeah, absolutely. This is already looking pretty awesome. Yeah, this time shift or, or time shift ride looks insane. But this is called uh, Savory Downs, created by Poops It Out. And the description says Thomas Savory invented the first commercially available steam engine in the early 1700s. But what's less known is he had a version of a world entirely powered by a vision of a world entirely powered by steam. Even lesser known was his great grandson Jackson Savory, who shared in that dream. And in 1946, with help from his cult-like followers, he built a power plant run by steam. Afterwards, he built many steam-powered machines, and his followers loved it so much they stayed, and a community was born. The community is Savory Downs. Come and enjoy some time exploring the sights and rides of this world powered by steam. So, a very, very long detail about the park, but it definitely sets up for a very good storyline with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th there's already so many things in here that there's so much detail that goes mm -hmm. along with that storyline. It's going to be amazing. Yes, and this park is completely maxed out on the PS4, and... I think Iron Maddie was saying this when he was looking at this park, just like, if this creator got a PS5, he might make the PS5 crash with how much detail he puts into small areas. Um, but this ride does have the best log flume I've seen, and I know you've done a lot of really good water rides and stuff, so I'm interested to get your take on that. Uh, but what are your initial thoughts before we really get started with the tour? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same with Iron Maddie. The level of detail and every corner of the park the railings the walls just around the paths just amazing work that's been done yeah this is really impressive and i remember when he's sending photos and some of the groups working on this and kind of seeing what this entryway looked like when it was just terrain around it and seeing it now it just it's amazing how he brought it all together so now as we get our tickets for the park um and i know so you mostly do challenge. Have you really done much sandbox parks, or do you like the aspect of building a park with the challenge to it, with the whole financial side of it? I I tend to like the just the challenge side to have to be working with money to make sure I can do it. But I also like to see how detailed I can get with it, mm -hmm. um, without destroying the park or or uh, putting it in financial ruin somewhere along the way. <laughs> yes. Totally agree. Um, yeah, so like I said, your your stuff's really fun to watch, and especially series you got going on right now, and I don't know what I'm doing with the camera right here, but um, this is, I mean, it's just amazing to see the level of detail like this for a flat ride. Yeah, and it all seems to, to mesh well together. I mean, I never would have thought to have a ride like this enclosed like that mm -hmm. uh, and have the, uh, the pipe in the background. Uh, in the ride area. That was really cool to see. Right, and um, so he's made a monument for a guy up there who's part of a part of a um, console group that sadly passed away fairly recently and was one of the ones that started the group, so he made a little monument to him. It says, this park is dedicated to Kekis, the one who brought us all together and was a foundation to the best online gaming community of all time. Um, so that's pretty cool, kind of creating a little monument for the guy up there who basically helped start the um, one of the groups for console players. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty nice homage to have it in such a grand building there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think, kind of like you said, with um, never thinking to maybe use that type of ride or with like inside the type of building it is, it's amazing that basically the only colors that are used here is like gray and black. But it's done in such a way where it doesn't seem overdone um, because of the different building styles and stuff like that. Um, and then here we're heading up to this random walkway that I saw, and this ends up being the um, CEO's kind of hangout. CEO poop. I love that. <laughs> and he's even got his little game console right there. 
So the CEO's playing Planet Coaster while the park's open. Expect nothing less, right? Yeah, that that's amazing. And to think, and there's no there's no theme maker toolkit or anything like that mm -hmm. on console. So everything's made with in-game pieces, which is incredible to do that. Yeah, well, y'all had to do it at some point, um, but I guess now once TMTK happened, it's everybody got so accustomed to it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I try not to, but there's some things you just can't. Right. It'll either destroy your computer because of the piece count, or it'll look extremely blocky or something like that. Right. So, yeah. But this does... this. I don't see any of that in this park. Everything looks like it's right where it should be. Um, like you said, with the colors, it, to you on, to use a only a few colors, but to make it pop as much as it is, that's in, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I like walking around flip cam mode, especially like not as much in the queues because then you're bouncing over the guest, right? But I just love being able to see the see the park as it's intended to be seen, right? Um, yeah. And just how immersive it is, and like that that custom build for that lift hill right there, it just looks so good. Yeah, yeah, it looks incredible. And not to mention, he recolored the track pieces. Mm -hmm. You don't see that too often. Uh, it, obviously, people will do it, but most of the videos that I watch, they don't. People will recolor the track, but they won't go through and recolor the individual pieces. And I think that adds a nice little extra layer of detail. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think just because of the tedious aspect of it, or I think also a lot of people don't really realize that you can do that. Um, but what I like is that he kept like the, the main support of the track the same the whole way, or like the main kind of yeah. whatever the phrase would be for that bottom triangular portion of the track. It's just the top yeah. rails that he changed. Yeah, it keeps it consistent through the through the ride, and uh, I, trying to figure out if there was specific why it was green and red in specific areas. I assume red's like inversion and green mm -hmm. is maybe some type of downward uh, uh, G-force. Yeah, so that's why you're on here with me, noticing those different stuff that I didn't even think about. And so I'm just showing everybody right here, for those that don't know of how you can actually, um, as the cameras get messed up, how you can actually create a separate coaster on the transfer track just by manipulating the system, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, and so it's really kind of kind of cool to see how he worked that in, um, and so it's just by basically having it slow down to um, one mile per hour with the brakes, and it just stops at that point, and so it looks realistic, right? Yeah, he did a good job to hide the uh, the lift hill to get it up there too with the uh, the boiler. Mm -hmm. I agree. So we're this is called time shift, and let's see if we let me. You look at these stats real quick. Um, biggest drop, 95 feet. Vertical G-force is definitely higher, a little bit higher. Um, but sometimes that can be tough with these Gerslauer coasters because they are so compact. But we will talk to you after the coaster. So that was an amazing coaster, and Matt, I'm going to ask you first, what are your overall thoughts of the coaster? Uh, I thought it was incredible. It was very smooth. It had good pacing throughout the, the ride. The inversions seemed to all make sense, and it incorporated all of the, the scenery really well for it being such a compact design. Mm -hmm. I loved it. 
I like the fact that it's kind of built into like a windmill, so it's supposed to have some sort of way where it's probably not necessarily powered right by electricity and stuff, or at least uh, generators and all that. I don't know, it's, it's, it's really cool. And then here you got custom supports the whole way, so that is... Custom supports can be tedious to make, but it's done so well in a way where like they obviously look different, but I didn't even realize that it was custom supported until I got a closer up view of it. Um, just to see that like the, the um, dividers and stuff were different. And yeah. it's got even a little transfer track for a train. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Th those trains are so large too, so he did a good job to hide that it it's bigger than the track. So Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, that sign is just so good. Just made out of art shapes. Really impressive. And That's got to be one of the hardest things to do, is to make a, a really good sign um, out of art shapes. And all of the signs that he's done, they, most of them look custom, and they they just fit so well. Yeah, it's really well done. And I love this aspect here, how part of this train, train station is built into kind of this restaurant building. Um, so the train kind of goes right through it. So I just think that's another cool little touch that's something that you don't really see too often. Yeah, he did a good job of squeezing in restaurants and inconspicuous places. Mm -hmm. Also, the crane games, mm -hmm. those are hard to get in because of how big of a footprint they, they have for such a small game. Yeah. How about these, um, I know it's not necessarily custom lights, but the custom light poles there are really cool. Yeah, they just add another layer of detail, yeah. which fit in with the park really well. And then you got, so it's like even all the flat rides in this park are just super themed. And this log flume we're about to get on is just absolutely amazing. Um, and we'll talk through it as well because it's like five minutes long. So definitely, <laughs> definitely take some time. Um, but this area just looks really cool. And I know on, I think it was your park, before you got your new PC and had to start over, mm -hmm. you did a really detailed um, river raft ride, right? Um, yeah. With like where you had like the, the filtration system and you tried to add in all that realism to it. So just like how yeah. difficult is it to actually theme up a water ride well? That, <laughs> I feel like water rides are probably one of the hardest things to do in the game because there's so much you have to account for if you, if you really want to make it look realistic mm -hmm. not that the in-game doesn't look realistic but um you know most of your water rides aside from log flumes which have the trough that go up above the ground are built into the ground or with rocks around right uh, and that is such a tedious task to to go through and try and fit those in and cover up the the little metal trough pieces but um this log flume, I didn't realize, uh, and now it's kind of kicking in, but the one piece that we went under initially is a trough for this, <laughs> which is incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And so, honestly, didn't realize this when I was recording this. I probably should have stopped so we could fully read everything, because um, I didn't realize till about halfway through that there's a full-on like major storyline going on here. So, if anybody's watching this and they really want to get the full detail of everything make sure to pause the video to fully read the signs um, so that was my fault there but then I love here how you've got the train that would go by on the left side and you can already see all the piping and stuff for the water lines and um, he didn't build like yeah, a special no. trough but he put like the cement paving around it to where it just fits perfectly yeah and that's I was just gonna talk about that because that's that's a tedious job to go through and make sure it's not coming through. And there hasn't been anything that's come into the trough where we're floating down here. So that's that's a lot of work to put in. Yeah, that would be one thing in a Planet Coaster 2 that I'd like to see. Because in terms of like, I just hate how if something's on a grid and you split it from the grid, mm -hmm. it creates its own building that you can't merge with anything else. Which I understand why, but just makes it so tedious when using those um, concrete pieces because you constantly have to split from building, advance move, yep. split from building, advance move, and it just it is so tedious. Yeah, I do that a lot. Uh, I did that in one of my previous episodes with planner pieces recently. Okay. And it, yeah, I was I was done by the end of the episode. <laughs> 
I didn't want to see another planner piece for the for the rest of my recording. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts so far of this water ride? I know you've talked about the how difficult it is for stuff to kind of be placed around it, it like that. But what else do you think about the overall ride? This is it's really well done. I mean, the water effects with the piping. I never would have thought to do like a little pipe that goes up and over, have the water coming out of it. That's that's a really cool feature that you would see in a real park. Um, and also, like some of the viewpoints that you get, like as you're floating along here, just looking down and other guests and seeing some of the other attractions that you're floating by is is really cool. Yeah, it's as I said. I think um, as of filming this, this is a Saturday, and this is the day where Iron Matty did his live tour of it. And I told him before he went on it in the chat, I was like, this is by like the best log film I've seen. And he was like, even better than that one we toured a year ago. And like, we did one that was really good. I'm like, dude, it's significantly better. And he totally, he agreed. So like, this is just so impressive. Like you said, all the little details that nobody thinks about, but then once you see him, it's like, it makes sense as to what you would see in real life. Yeah. And normally when, when you're on a log flume like this, where it's, it's a lengthy log flume, uh, you know, you're starting to see the same things over and over again, mm -hmm. and you really don't have that here. Every every turn, every little drop or major hill that we go down, it's all different, which is really hard to do. Yes, for sure. And I love this little spot right here, just because to me it feels so different than the rest of it. Um, it's where you actually have a wall to part of the side, and mm -hmm. and you can kind of then see the drop of the next log flume coming down. You got that fire animatronics and um yeah it's a nice little touch yeah just really really cool oh and the people shooting the the water <laughs> cannons that's that's fun <laughs> yeah and i love how so many pipes have this um he's using those water effects with it to make it seem like the pipes being busted and stuff um mm -hmm. just gives that really cool effect and then here like Adding those pipes as part of the fencing, like that's something I wouldn't even think to do, right? But it looks so cool. Yeah. It fits the area so well with like a, that type of theming. Yeah. Makes me want to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is so well done, very impressive. And I remember looking at this creator's first park and you could tell like it was his first park with some things, but it was still just so impressive. Um, what he was able to build and then now just seeing how he's progressed is really cool he said his next park is going to be full on just like trying to make a realistic theme park so that's gonna be really cool to see just how he approaches the realism side of stuff yeah i just the the thing that happened maybe a couple seconds ago putting a door on its side mm -hmm. so you only have half the door showing that makes a lot of sense to make it a smaller smaller door because those planet coaster doors are so oh, large yes <laughs> well, and then right there even just having the the chain link fence like that to me it just kind of mm -hmm. it's just a different way to have a different feel of that section um so he did a good job of creating so many different kind of atmospheres in a way which i know it's not an atmosphere you know what i'm saying where it's like it just feels yeah. different for that segment um because of that aspect so that was such an amazing ride yeah, and there's a lot there's a lot in it for it's a relatively small space for how much we went through there. Yeah, totally agree. So, and so you can see kind of this space right here, um, using those kind of starry panels. Mm -hmm. And so it's not really lit up much, but that is an area where you know it was triggered tonight because you know you then come out and you do the drop, and this is the one area that I feel like is lit up a little bit more. And then it's also yeah. great seeing that. Um, custom supported RMC in the background. Yeah, absolutely. And then you got a waterfall over there. There's just so much to this park and you got a random house up on the hill. <laughs> I was going to say that's like not even part of the park. That's just to to get add that in there just for a little bit of uh immersion is awesome. Yeah. I really agree. Um yeah, it's just I just I know so one thing that viewers I think should know is this is crazy to me is I believe he got done with about 60% of this part originally and then somehow deleted the file by accident or something happened. So he had to totally restart. Um, 
And so I'd be interested, I know we never will, but I'd be interested to see like how this one compared to what he was originally doing. Cause I'm sure it's one of those where there were some minor tweaks that he made on the new one. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, when you start remaking something, you then realize, oh, I could do this better or, and so forth. Um, yeah. yeah. Or you find a different piece. Yep. Uh, and then all of a sudden it changes your entire building style for that structure. Mm -hmm. I've done that many times. Yeah. <laughs> and just all the different kind of little techniques, like having the poles turn sideways there to kind of help support the roof. Um, really cool. And then the views of kind of the surrounding hills and stuff looks really great as well. that coaster looks awesome mm -hmm. those custom supports really do it justice yeah now the only thing i will say about that rmc is um usually they've got pretty steep drops so it seems like that drop could be just a little bit steeper um and we'll see when we kind of get to it um but like you said that custom supported i think it's called a tr uh trough not trough what am i thinking of um oh, i can't believe trunks what do you say oh for us trellis yeah Front. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever whatever that custom sport lift hill is called on RMCs, they I think it's a truss, but yeah, it looks so good. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you record and film something and then you're like thinking back and it's like, what was I trying to look at there? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? You know, and it, well in in this park, anywhere you look, you find little bits of detail. So mm -hmm. agreed. I mean, I'd be looking everywhere. Yeah, and that's the hard part, too, is because if it's just you looking around, you're turning all over the place, and I keep remembering, oh, yeah, I'm recording. I need this to seem yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love RMCs. Um, I know we talked a little bit before about Steel Vengeance, but are you a big fan of RMCs? or? Yeah, I love most of them. I've, I've done Iron Quasi, Twisted Colossus, Iron Rattler. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are just top end rides. So I got um, I'm interested. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm interested to see how they hold up over time, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna enjoy them now while I can. Absolutely. So I gotta <laughs> ask you about Guazi because I know we chatted before we started a little bit about Steel Vengeance and how intense Steel Vengeance is. Um, how is Guazi? Like, what were your thoughts on Guazi? Uh, Guazi is awesome. Uh, it's not as intense as Steel Vengeance, and it's a little bit shorter. Um, but it's like the perfect mix between intensity and like just a generally fun coaster. That's awesome. Uh, it, it has a lot of rewritability. So like you can go and you could ride it over and over and over again and not have any issues with it. Well, that's, that sounds amazing. So now we've got six inversions on this coaster and we're going to do a daytime ride and then a nighttime ride in, um, sitting in the very back row just to kind of get a good visual of it that way. So we will talk to you after the coaster.
All right, so that was the awesome RMC. And Matt, what were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was great. The layout was really good. There were a lot of uh, uh, really great inversions. Uh, if I had to be nitpicky, uh, you know, RMCs tends to have a little bit more aggressive, like small airtime hills between the bigger hills. But I mean, that's extremely nitpicky. I don't think that's anything to mm-hmm. to argue with with the layout of this coaster. Yeah. I agree. I think in the beginning of the coaster and in the end, it had some of that. Like, you can see a little bit of it right there um, as it kind of comes over mm-hmm. these first drop. Um, but usually RMCs tend to kind of have them throughout most of the coaster, right? And, um, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, I, I really like that. I think if, if I were to pick on something... Or pick on something. <laughs> um, I think the pacing is really good. I think the inversions were good. Um, I talked about the lift hill, but I think he was trying to get three coaster trains on there. So he had a couple of moments where he put like block, little block breaks and random sections on the ride. Um, and so pl- because it's a long coaster, he had to have a, had a mid course as well. Um, so I probably would probably just run this with two. Um, I know realism, real life, you want to have three, but just for the sake of a coaster running a little bit more smooth um, and fluid in the game, I just feel like two works best. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I don't have we other than like a twisted Colossus where it was two completely different coasters. Really, mm-hmm. have we seen? I don't know if we've seen a RMC. Oh, I guess Steel Vengeance has three. Steel Vengeance. Um, I mean, technically, New Texas Giant could run three because it's got a, a, a break section. Um, Forget so, about that. but that was you know also the first one they made, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah, but I think I think usually you'll see RMCs with two trains. They're also usually fairly yep. fairly short layouts, right? I mean, I'm sure Guazi could run three. Yeah. Uh, Guazi Guazi doesn't has so much speed or uh, so much speed coming into the brake run. They would need to really expand the layout a lot. Oh, really? Okay. In, in my opinion, yeah. at least. Um, so we have about a minute left. What are your overall thoughts on the park? Uh, it's amazing. It's really well done. The theme sticks all the way through from one end of the park to the other. Uh, I don't know if there's really much feedback that I could give for this park. This is really well done. I'm really glad I got to, to explore it. Absolutely. Um, I totally agree with everything you said. And one thing that annoys me sometimes in the game is little glitches, like the pathing that he put over some or the ceiling tiles he put over some of the pathing goes away when you zoom mm-hmm. up too high but yeah i mean this is this is amazing the level of detail is next level um that water rise is just insane i mean both coasters are awesome especially the gerslauer um just the way that that was kind of all intertwined and then he's got these um you know this construction crane which i mean if you look inside there he's actually put some people in there <laughs> yeah <laughs> the guy's looking like he's working um there's like a little elevator shaft there um, with stairs and stuff, so just really, really amazing. And thank you so much, Matt, for joining me um, for this tour. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, once again, make sure you go check out his channel. The link's in the description, but it's mostly average Matt. Amazing, amazing Planet Coaster content. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.